They go say you're too low. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to touch your neighbor and say it's time to come on up to another level. Honey, we too low for the world today. We too low for what's going on in society. The church is too low. I'm the Lobo Shaya. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Your praise too low. The devil be done ran your house over. Your hallelujah too low. Your tongues don't have enough power. Hi. I'm the Lobo Shaya. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know it or not, but he brought you in here for a reason. I said he brought you in here to empower you. He brought you in here tonight to get you ready. Because something is on the way and the devil ain't going to get the victory if you come on and get the power. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, behind me. I feel like I need a praise from coming behind me. Hello, Boshaya. Come on, to the left of me. Come on, somebody. There's something God wants to do in our bellies tonight. We didn't come in here to play no games. This ain't no conference. It's a move of God. It's an assignment. Hi. Hey! Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, Jesus. Oh, I ain't going to get ahead of myself tonight. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. For all that he has done in my life and all that he is doing, I praise him tonight for a new assignment in my life. Thank you, Jesus. I praise him tonight that he has found me worthy of a different assignment. Some of you may not understand what that means, but you don't stay in one grade your whole life of your salvation. But as you are broken in the Lord, he takes you to a new assignment. And I thank God that he's chosen me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad to be chosen. I honor the Lord for this great man of God, Pastor Gibson and his wife. Why don't we give them a good God bless you. Oh, I know you can do better than that. Amen. I'm happy to be here tonight. And to one of my brothers in the gospel, Kirk Carr, who has blessed us tonight, whose music is a blessing. And I ain't trying to make no friends so I don't have to blow up nobody. But I thank God for the anointing. Good Lord have mercy. I thank God that somebody has decided to make a stand against the garbage that is in the kingdom. Oh, I told y'all I'm on a different assignment. And ain't no compromise in my belly. God is saying, if you want my life, then you got to lose yours. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of us is trying to get the Lord's life. And we want to keep our own. But he said that he that seeketh to save his own life, he shall lose it. But he that loses his life for the sake of the gospel shall gain an everlasting life. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm finding out every step of the way that my being purified in the house of the Lord is not so that I can get along with my neighbor. I don't come to church every Sunday and get in my words so that I can learn how to get along with the people on the usher board and in the choir. But I come to church because I got to make it in. I think we done forgot that we got to make it in to the kingdom. Lord have mercy. A lot of us are just saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry because I offended you. I don't want to offend nobody because when I leave this world, I want to make it in. The Bible said that the righteous is going to scarcely make it. 
And oftentimes I look at my mother who I know to be a righteous woman of God. And the Lord has often said to me, looking at her lifestyle, who have probably read the Bible now about four times from beginning to end. And he said to me, she gonna scarcely make it in. And when I saw that, I said, God, what about myself? Honey, we ain't doing nothing but playing games and we ought to go ahead and face that. Listen, if God would have come right now, many of us that go to church every Sunday is not ready to meet him when we come because we think that we can live any kind of way and God is going to accept it. But I'm telling you, this is a straight gospel and this is a level that God is calling for and none but the righteous, oh, I wish I had a church in here tonight, is going to see God. It's time out for playing church and acting like we save and pretending like we save and, and being in church just so we can get the pressure lifted off of us for our bills. It's time to get in here and say, God, do something down in my belly because I want to make it in. God, I want you to purge me. I want you to wash me. I want you to purify me because I want to be ready. That's been my cry to the Lord. The book of Jeremiah 17 to 10, you can write this down. We're getting ready to see what it is the Lord is talking about tonight. Jeremiah 17, 10 says that the Lord shall reward us for the fruit of our doings. Somebody say the fruit of our doings. We are in a time right now, and I got to say this, hoping that we can digest him tonight. Because a lot of times the Lord is speaking, but he doesn't have a belly to digest him. Doesn't have a system that can hold what he is trying to say. He said, in the last days, there will be a generation that will not be able to endure sound doctrine. In other words, it'll come into their system, but they won't be able to digest it. So it'll end up being head knowledge and not deliverance. And that's what the church is full of today. A lot of head knowledge, but no deliverance. Because we are listening to the word, but we are not eating the word. The importance of eating is we must eat him to become him. <laughs> we must digest him so that we can be fashioned of him. And the Lord began to say to me, he said, I'm calling you to the next level. And one thing that really just stuck with me the other night and even tonight when I got into the sanctuary and I was sitting in my seat and the presence of the Lord came on me, he said, if you don't want my way and the enemy sees that you don't want to do it my way, then the devil has already prepared your imitation. And he will let us live in the church all of our lives in the imitation and not in the real. God have mercy. I feel something on me tonight. He'll give us a gospel that looks like God and sounds like God and feels like God, but it's an imitation because we can't live it. Oh, Jesus. It speaks in tongues like God. It is called divination. It's when it sounds like God and it feels like God and it's the same goose pimples like God. But we have no intentions of obeying God's every letter. So the devil says, if you don't want the real, if you got a problem with what God is saying, then I'm going to give you an imitation and make you think you in the real. And so he began to say to me that the body of Christ as a whole is being deceived by the imitation that we think 
is of God. I'm going to take my time and say this, mother, because a lot of people don't know this. And that's why we can, we can, we can, we can embrace all of this mess and all of this foolishness that's in the body of Christ. Because you know what? We're not looking to die out. I thought when I got saved that they told me that I'm supposed to die to the flesh. Oh, I, I see I ain't got no church in here, so I'm just going to preach to you, mother. You know, they told me I'm supposed to die to the flesh and I'm supposed to give up the world and follow after God. And so what the devil does, he said, if you don't want God's way, then I will create an imitation and I'll bring the world and the church and then I'll make you think that you're saved and you're not saved. Some people don't know that they are backslidden because they've never been saved for real. See, let me help you understand to know when you are in the counterfeit because the counterfeit does not process you to purification. And this ain't gonna be no shouting gospel right now so you can just go on home. But anyway, the counterfeit does not process you to purification. The counterfeit leaves you in the glory of the church, in the singing and the shouting and the dancing and the praising and the speaking in tongues and the organizing and all of that. But it doesn't get to the core of your spirit where the junk is lying dormant, the kind of stuff that can take you to hell. See, the imitation doesn't do that because it takes power to get in your belly. And a lot of people preaching ain't got no power. Y'all ain't saying nothing. A lot of made up messages but ain't got no power. Do you not know that this word ought to hit your belly and cause something to start agitating that thing that's down in you? Something tonight ought to be crawling on the inside of your belly saying, I want to be free. I want to be delivered. I can't stay the way I am. I told Somebody, the other day I said, I don't want to hear another God going to bless me message. Y'all ain't saying that. I'm getting a lot of amens tonight. I don't want to hear nobody else say, honey, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God going to bring you out. Honey, this is the year that God going to give you some finances and honey, money is coming and the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, watch the deception of the devil. He said, because the church now is bent out on being blessed and ain't nobody challenging us to be purified and saved. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, right now the church is a mess. We live the way we want to live. We go where we want to go. Some of y'all in here still disco. What y'all talking about? And still saying you saved. God ain't gonna get no amen in here. But my Bible told me that I must make a difference between clean and unclean and holy and unholy. Oh, y'all sit down. I gotta teach this tonight. I gotta gotta say this tonight. Gotta teach it tonight. Got to teach it tonight. Got to teach it tonight. See, all over the country, that's what we hear. He going to bless you. He going to bring you out. But where is the person that's causing me when I get to church? I can't look at them because, because I know I haven't been where I should be. And I know that there's something going on in my life that I need God to correct. And I feel challenged in my heart. Where is the kind of ministry that's causing me to feel crying? When I walk in church, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Honey, there was a day when I got saved that you could not fornicate and then put your robe on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, God. Oh, y'all ain't gonna go with this tonight. Y'all ain't gonna go with this tonight. Because maybe them church mothers were sold out to God. And they'll look right at you and say, where you been? Y'all know we ain't got them kind of ministries in the church no more to ask you where you been. Because we are not being raised in the spirit. We are bastard children. You let me ask some of these folks where you been and they'll look at you like none of your business. Oh, he told me it was going to be a rough word tonight. 
He told me it was going to be a rough word tonight. Coming with truth, baby. When you go home and watch this, watch. When you go home and you get ready to go to bed and, and, and all day long on your job, is this your spirit? God, I want to make it. God, help me right now. Lord, every day, Jesus, come on, God. God, purify me. God, this, this right here, this area right here in my life. Got to go. God, God. No, 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 no. You know what we do? You know what we, do? We, we, we adapt ourselves to things and people that condone where we are. And the majority is not going to heaven. Y'all remember heaven? Anybody remember heaven? Everybody ain't going. Y'all hear me when I say everybody ain't going. Because everybody's not going to purify to this level. Don't let no demon tell you that what we are doing in the church today, it's all right. Because it is not all we're not finding people fasting and praying and getting direction from God for our lives. Is that all? That's what you want to do. That's what you know what? I tell you what. I tell you what. This what you want to do? That's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what you do. Because see, God needs to use you to draw people. So it, we ain't all ain't gonna be alike. So what you do is, well, it's all right, you know. You just, just, just do whatever it is that's gonna help you to draw people. Because see, God wanna use you to touch some people's life too. So I tell you what you do. I tell you what you do. You do this. This is what you do. You, you, you look like them, and then you, you know, you, 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 you dance like they dance, and you do all the stuff they do. Because see, He wanna use you. But let me ask you something. How can you draw a person to a table and you can't feed them? See, y'all ain't saying that. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I forgot where I was. I know, I know. See, 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 you can't, you can't draw a person out of darkness and cannot bring them into total light. Y'all ain't saying that. You can't bring a person to a brook and then you ain't got no water for them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when the Holy Ghost begin to speak to me about my next assignment, I made up in my mind, I'm not going to dye my hair purple. I'm not going to put an earring in my nose. I'm not going to put jeans on down ways to convince you to come to God because I understand something if I gotta go to where you are then maybe you listen maybe I'm trying to draw somebody that God ain't calling he said because mine they know my voice and a stranger they will not follow it's been like that lately for the last couple of months and I've been preaching. He said, do you find it strange that the body of Christ have a problem digesting righteousness? You hear how low the amens is in here? Because we ain't trying to die before God. We're not trying to ask God to kill us. We're trying to stay as close as we can to the world. And say, Lord, I'm saved. God, I know you, I know you got a call on my life. And so this is what we say. And let me announce to you what your grade is. You in the grade that says, well, it really, I mean, you know, it really doesn't take all that. I, I really don't think that you need to um, really, really, really go that far. Let me tell you something. You ain't went far enough in God to know what is God. You haven't gone far enough in your level of purification to understand what is deception of the enemy. And so what the devil says to you is, now don't go too deep now. Now don't get too consecrated. Now you ain't got to fast all like that. Now don't, don't you start acting all weird. Because you know, don't nobody else in the church act like that. And don't you start speaking all them tongues and falling all out and being all special. Because you know, you know, you're going to make folk want to run away from you. So I tell you what you do. You just stay on the border with everybody else because you are right. And the Bible said, woe unto you that measure yourselves by each other. Woe unto you that look at your neighbor and say, well, I must be all right because Jan Janice can do it and Kathy can do it and Gwen do it and Sarah do it and they still love God and they still praise God but you know what they're not you and they're not your assignment and I wish I had a church in here tonight and that's why the Lord brought me in this place tonight that's why he brought me in here he brought me in here to say you're not your neighbor and if you're in this place there is a place that God is calling you to and you can't walk like your neighbor you can't talk like your neighbor you can't live like your neighbor you're not Let me read something to you.
you. Watch this. Watch this. Go to Daniel. Daniel 10. Watch this. Watch this. That's what I'm talking about. Honey, we ain't shouting on no gospel no more. Some of y'all sitting looking at me like this here, like, what? Some of y'all looking at me like, what? what? Well, what is she? Well, what? Okay, wait, wait. I'm trying to understand. Okay, so what? Been saved five years and looking at me like, what? What you trying to say? Well, well. Oh, you mean? You know, it's somehow when God start challenging us to our next level, we start playing crazy. Like, what? What you mean? What? What you talking about, God? You know, isn't it somehow we play crazy when we don't wanna, when we don't wanna give up to God, and then we say, "Well, honey, I see, I, I know, I know, I know how she preached tonight, but honey, I can't, I can't give up like that." You know what the Lord showed me? He said, "Isn't it strange how you can be dating a man for 10, 15 years, and and, and God can be trying to purify you and tell you, you know what? I want you to come out of sex and say, you, I just can't, I can't give him up, I just can't, honey, y'all don't understand, and let him sleep with Gwen, and you would leave him tomorrow and never look back." So that says you can. Come on, somebody. Oh, but see, you just don't want to for God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on here, somebody. See, you ain't going to let him sleep with your best friend and stay with him. So if you can walk out on him because he cheated on you, then you got the power to walk out because you love God. But we try to play crazy. What you talking about, God? What? The Lord said... The Lord saying that tonight, he said, I want a different level out of your life. And we started looking like, what? Well, you mean to tell me that where I am, I ain't all right? No! Well, 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 well you know what? Well, well, you don't know where he brought me from. And that's your problem. We are too high of where he brought us from. That we ain't went no further in him. You don't know how long it took me to get here. You don't know the warfare. What warfare? I, if you, Proverbs, I, I don't understand it. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because you know what? You wouldn't be in here tonight if God hadn't been dealing with your spirit. Because one thing you do know about the ministry that God has given me, it ain't no play thing. Amen, somebody. So if God wasn't trying to do something in your belly, you wouldn't be in here tonight. Amen, somebody. But see, it's a matter of the fact that you got to make up in your mind that all right, this is it. Because you know what? If you don't go all the way to purification, then the devil is going to push you further in what you're trying to What pastor told you? And this, this right here has got me, just got my goal because I've seen the damage it's done in my life. That's all right, B. Talking about getting people out of the wheelchair. Don't tell me nothing about this newfound church. We hiring people, sis, to set up in church and sign language when they told me in the old days that death was healed. Y'all ain't gonna wanna talk back in here. I can't get no amens tonight and I understand why. Oh, no. <laughs> That's old stuff. That's old time church. Child, don't nobody do that kind of stuff no more. Ain't nobody wearing they dresses like that. No, you the slut. Yes, they are. Yes, they are still wearing they dresses like that. Show a little cleavage sometimes. Who you trying to win? Cause he ever, listen, whoever you gonna get, he ain't number to 
ought to show them. If I, I think if you got big legs, you ought to pull your dress down because who want to see? Y'all don't want me to teach it here. And that's your spirit out there. And you the very chief that they are put over the missionary board. You the very demon right there that they are put over the choir with your unpurred self. And then here you are, you raising up all these babies. And then listen, everybody all over the church is looking like you and dressing like you. But I'm gonna tell you something, you ain't the way. God is the way. And this Bible is right. If I don't live it, it's right. He said we're to project God with a shame face. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I can't. I'm, 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 Pastor, I'm through. I done messed up. The amens I went from 10 to none. They done went from 10 to none. And the brothers in the church trying to live safe. And they hate when offering time come because here come all of us. This is where we, this is where we going. But God is charging the spirits of men in this building tonight. He's charging you tonight. He said, for every word that I preach, for every word that come across the gospel, that you refuse to digest, you're going to be tried for that word. You're going to be judged for it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, y'all don't understand that this, 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 this thing called Christianity, when I was a little girl, I remember, and my mother can remember, me coming home from kindergarten, I remembered as praying as I'm standing here. I had a red checkered dress on with a white collar with little red trim and checkers around the collar. And I remember the first day I came home from school and I had wrote my name. My name was all backwards. My letters was backwards. I ran the house, I showed my mother. She was so excited. She took my little paper and stuck it up on the refrigerator. <laughs> and all of my aunts that came over, she said, look at my baby's name. My baby wrote her name a day in school. But Kurt, when I got in the third grade, and my name was still looking like that, she said, sit your tail down, cause you ain't in kindergarten now. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. See, when you first get saved, we tell you, come as you are, but you can't stay as you are, baby. You been in here five years now. You 10 years old in salvation and still win a miniskirt? Oh, y'all ain't saying. 
stand up. You seven years old in church now, and you still going to see the male gigolos? Wait, 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 wait. You, wait, 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 wait. You 12 years old in ministry, and you still listen to Luther and Whitney and all of them people out there in the world and telling your spirit that ain't nothing wrong with it? Yes, it is. There is something wrong with it. Because if that music does not pronounce what is the plan of salvation, it is not gospel music. Preach it. I train my spirit because she's not my savior and she don't know the direction that God is taking this spirit y'all ain't saying nothing Luther can't take my spirit down the highway y'all because he don't know my destiny y'all ain't saying nothing so anything that I listen to that don't know my destiny is a detour come on here church come on I got a different assignment and I'm telling everybody and I'm forewarning everybody that sends me an information invitation you don't want the real gospel you don't want me I got a different assignment because if somebody don't stand up and speak truth in the face of the devil we not gonna have a church. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. If somebody don't begin to stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ and declare wrong to be wrong and right to be right, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because that Bible told me, sis, he said, make a difference between clean and unclean. I don't know about y'all Bible, I don't know what to tell y'all to do, but mine told me to come out from among them. And be ye separated, y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, come on here, church. I don't hear nothing in here. I don't know if I got a church. I know y'all can't praise him right now because you got to digest that thing. I know, see, 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 I understand. I understand how hard a gospel is like that because you know what? Dollars, the almighty dollars, the big compromise in your spirit. And some of y'all is selling out to the devil right now. You will play anything and you will do anything but any amount of money. It's all about how much money you got in your pocket. But I'm here to tell you something. When you stand before God in judgment, you're going to find out that 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 this is the church. And it's this tight. Isn't this some? I'm preaching to the church and it's tight. If the world is coming to be saved, Peter and John said, Silver and gold, have I not? But such as I have. You know what they were able to say to a sinner? Look on us. I don't know about y'all. But I'm selling out. I'm in the process of, of sell. That kind of language is not in the church no more. Sell out, purge, purify, sanctify, give up to God, tell him yes, travail. They ain't in the church anymore. Because I'm saying to people going, what? What you say? Chivet, process, process of purification. What? That kind of language. And that's what the Lord said to me. He said, that's what your new assignment is. He said, your new assignment is to familiarize mine with my language. He said, your new assignment is to familiarize their ears with the process of the way that I intend to do things and tell them if they want another way, 
the devil's got the imitation. And I'm going to tell you something. He starts out with deception. And I'm going to tell you why. When he met Eve in the garden, she should have known that snakes didn't talk. Before she even heard what he said, common sense should have told her that her and Adam were the only two in the garden talking. But I close with this. You know what happened to her? One of my friends said the best that I've ever heard it. Pastor Curlin, he said, when the devil perceives that you don't want God's way, he has an imitation already prepared for your spirit. And what his assignment is to do is to make the imitation look just like God so you will never know the difference. And his assignment is to cause you to live 20 years in church in the imitation and have never tapped the real. And you're the people that will say to God, but I cast out devils in your name. And he said, and I don't even know you. Depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, and iniquity is anything that you do for God the wrong way. Y'all give me that look again. What? It's an illegal method of doing things. Anything that you don't get through prayer and supplication, you got it illegally and you ain't going to keep it. As I close tonight, I feel like I got my job done. Oh, I ain't stuck about shouting. Anybody can make you shout. I don't want to make you shout. As a matter of fact, I'm tired of shouting. Well. I want to make sure that my anchor holds and grips a solid. Anybody in here that might be I can't miss. You know what I'm saying, baby? You can't miss. You can't afford to miss this time. In this place tonight, as we leave out of this building, I, this is what I'm feeling. That the spirit of the one who trains those that he calls his is going to begin to teach in your spirit. Trust me when I tell you this. In less than 24 hours, if you are his, you're going to hear his voice starting to teach your spirit. Uh, put that down. Don't say that. Go back and apologize. Uh-uh, don't put that on. Uh-uh, turn that off. No, stop right now and pray. Uh-uh, don't go out to lunch with them. Stay over here. No, no, go get in your car and get your Bible. Yeah, you see, y'all ain't, yeah. I said, I said the Holy Ghost said in less than 24 hours, if you hear us, the trainer is going to start teaching your spirit. You got to stop that. You got to put that down. That ain't going to work. You're going to go to touch it. And you're going to feel something in your spirit. Say, uh-uh, mm-mm, mm-mm, not you. Don't mess with that. Leave that alone. I said, leave it alone. I said, stop it. I said, stop now. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because that's what this is all about. That's what I came for. I came to ignite the trainer. He said tonight, if you in this building, and you know that you're his, then you know that it wasn't a flyer that brought you. The TV didn't bring you. 
he drew those that are his. And watch this, watch this. It's calm in here. No, I'm not getting ready to play some music. Because this is what our spirit wants now. And if you know that God is in your life, come now. And here you come. <laughs> yes, God. said, all of that is Christian drama, boo. And I'm not getting ready to do that drama tonight. Ain't no organ. Ain't no piano. For the first time in your Christian life, face Jesus. Just you and Jesus. Not you and the piano. Not you and the organ. Not Kirk Cobb coming up here with the group and singing. We love surrender all. And here you go, I just got so tough when they start singing that song. Because I really want Jesus. You know what that is? That is the fleshly emotions that have been charged. And I learned this when I took music. There are certain keys on that piano can make you feel all kind of moods. And the Holy Ghost said, tell my people stop being deceived. Because this God that you're trying to embrace, honey, you can embrace him in the kitchen. He's just as real while you vacuuming. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Honey, you can feel that power while you in the kitchen. You can feel it when you're in the bathroom. You can feel it in your bedroom. You ain't listen. Because ain't no piano in your house. Ain't no organ in your living room. You better learn how to praise him when you ain't got no music. I'm not going to do the drama thing tonight. He said, because those that are mine, they're going out of this auditorium and they're going to hear me and they're going to say, you know what? God spoke to me tonight. And they're going home and said, you know what? This got to go. That got to go. This got to go. Holy Ghost doesn't talk to me. This got to go. And by the way, you, brother man, you got to go. I can't. he's soon to come and I don't know when he's coming for me but I just hear this I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John, I'm praying to be ready. I'm praying to be ready. I'm praying to be ready. I've got to walk in Jerusalem. Just like John, I'm seeking to be ready. I'm seeking to be ready. I'm seeking. I gotta be ready to walk in 
Jerusalem, just like John. You better pray. But now.